Hi, everyone. Um, wow, I really loved that track. Really, really great. Um, that was uh, Keep Coming Back by Cloyd, um, producer from West Yorkshire. Thanks, um, Michelle, for the recommendation there. That was great. Um, hi, welcome, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us today um, for the Yorkshire Sound Women Network's Level Up in Audio seminar series. I'm Jess. Um, today, I'm going to be hosting this event with our guest, Michelle Zenner. Uh, this event series features musical artists and audio professionals presenting and sharing their projects, their ideas, their experiences um, with us all. Just a few things to note before we start the seminar. Um, we are recording this session at the moment, so please refrain from taking any screenshots or any recordings um, because the seminar will be available to rewatch again if you want to rewatch it. Uh, if you wish to remain anonymous in the call, that's absolutely fine. Feel free to turn your camera off. And lastly, just want to remind everyone to um, go on mute uh, whilst Shell is talking. Uh, if you have any questions, please write them in the chat section at any point, and either myself or Shell will pick up on the questions and uh, we will revisit them. Um, alternatively, um, there will be little pockets of time to ask questions if you want to unmute yourself and ask, that is also fine. Um, so I'm really excited to welcome our guest today, Shell Zenner, aka the godmother of new music, as I've heard her referred to. Shell is a, a Manchester-based radio presenter, producer, journalist, curator, and general hype woman. Um, Shell works for a number of radio stations, including uh, presenting and curating a weekly radio show for Amazing Radio and a show for Excess Manchester. She also works for BBC Introducing Manchester and Leeds, and um, I believe sometimes steps in to present on these stations as well. Um, she's a massive advocate and supporter of new talent and new music, and she's really on it with ones to watch each year. Um, Shell keeps a blog, uh, numerous playlists, and promotes so much new music on her radio shows. Um, you'll find her DJing for festivals, interviewing artists, judging applications for PRS music and hosting panels at industry events um, such as BBC Introducing Live. Um, so there really is no better person to be speaking with than Shell on how to get your music heard. Um, I was just thinking about this earlier. Um, we're living in an age in which you can share your music with people across the globe in, in seconds, um, but there's so much music out there, it's, it was also quite overwhelming. So how can you make an impact in the music industry and get your music noticed? Um, so with years of experience in discovering and supporting new music, um, Shell is going to tell us about her experiences um, as a new music specialist and share some insider advice on how to reach more fans, present your talents to the media and know what producers and promoters are looking for in the industry. So um, without further ado, Shell, I'm going to let you get on. Thanks so much, Jess. Uh, I'll book you again as my height lady. Yes, that was please. Impressive. <laughs> At the time, I just have to say, I have a small dog and she can be a little bit sassy. And she just realised there's a chunk of chicken that I've left in my dog walking bag at the bottom of the stairs. So if she becomes a pain, I will go and remove the chicken and give it to her. Uh, and then she'll be quiet, <laughs> hopefully. Anyway, hello, welcome. So lovely to see your faces tonight and I will do anything I can to help you on your journey. So um, I've put a few bits together, a few slides and stuff to tell you a little bit about me. So hopefully you get to know me a bit better, but also um, about, you know, things that I know and I've learned. Um, as Jess said, I've done things like assessing, you know, PRS and PPL applications, help musician applications, also um, music leads applications. So, you know, things that are kind of relevant to the local area, as well as being one of the AIM Awards judges this year for the Association of Independent Music. So, yeah, I got a full on kit. So tomorrow I'm having taco night, apparently, and ribs. That's what's happening here tomorrow because it is the AIM Awards tomorrow night. It's going to be streaming on YouTube uh, from 8 p.m. if you're really interested in what's going on in the independent music world. But yes, hello. Um, I'm Shell. So as Jess said, I am a bit of a music head, a bit of a music journalist. Uh, I present, I produce, I podcast, I voice over, I uh, me like mentor, I do lots of different things. Um, to hopefully, I've kind of boiled it down to, I'm obsessed with new music, hence playing Cloyd. Cloyd is a producer from West Yorkshire who I am frankly obsessed with. She dropped a, an EP at the back end of last year, got airplay on the Radio 1 dance show uh, for BBC Introducing with Jaguar. And she's just like, I remember the first time she came into BBC Introducing and she'd never performed live to a live session. And just seeing her absolute nerves, but she 
absolutely smashed it pulled it off and you know what it was one of those moments that you just know really empowered her and she's gone on like to perform live and really smash it she's doing lots of composition stuff working with loads of different artists collaborating and just just really like loving watching her journey basically so I thought if you didn't know Cloyd it would be really nice for you to maybe hear of her because I like other artists to inspire other artists if you're feeling low or something like that you know you know that you know if somebody else can do it it, it you know a different day can make all the difference so um yeah uh, keep coming back as well because uh, that was the name of the track and I thought that was very apt because I am so in awe of everything that Yorkshire Sound Women Network is doing uh, for the local scene especially in the north of England so the fact that you're all together just ultimately makes you more powerful so um shout out to Yorkshire Sound Women Network but yeah I will uh, play I'll, I'll get me PowerPoint out and uh, and we can be a little bit more impressive I was just adding a couple of extra bits in there so what I will do is I will share my screen and make it look a bit more impressive and um, that's what's going to happen bear with me a second you definitely wanting the chicken you can hear her barking in the background <laughs> start share right She's whining now. <laughs> right. Can you all see that? Yes, thumbs up. Technology is great, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> however, I've got a little bit of audio in there and we'll see whether that works or not. Hopefully, we will cross fingers. Um, I might have to actually go and retrieve the chicken from the dog. Bear with me one second. I will uh, be, be right back. You. Chicken retrieved, dog quiet. <laughs> Just giving her the full bag. There we go. We are, we're free now. Basically, she's got the bag. Here we go. So yeah, as Jess said, I work for Amazing Radio. I present um, and curate on Amazing Radio. So I'm really lucky. There's very few platforms now where you get to choose like a full show of new music every week. And I get to choose about 30, say, 30 new tracks every week. Um, basically that come from an uploader and I get to interview who I want and I get to feature who I want so I'm really really lucky and it's been a pleasure next year I'll have been on amazing radio for 10 years so I was like crazy vibes I also present on excess Manchester uh, generally doing weekend breakfast but I do a lot of cover work as well including there's a new music show on a Sunday evening uh, where they play music from all over the, the world, um, if it fits the brief of the station. And also uh, the evening show is quite a common one that I cover as well, which does play a lot of new music. And as Jess said, I work for BBC Introducing. So at the moment I present, um, well, actually, no, I don't present. I've presented both in the last month, I'd say. But uh, generally, my substantive role is I produce at BBC Introducing West Yorkshire. So basically putting the playlist together, booking all the sessions, uh, booking the artists in for features, um, things like we do this thing called Fresh Face, where we get a new artist on to answer a few ra random questions every week so we can kind of introduce them uh, to the audience, as BBC Introducing do. And I work as the team assistant at um, BBC Radio Manchester, which means I'm doing a lot of the back of house stuff, a lot of the track lists, making sure the videos are edited and are up on the website, sending the social media assets out that are really important for artists to be able to post on their socials, sending ideas across the Instagram account and just making sure all the PRS login and stuff like that gets done. But often I um, present and produce as well. This week I'm producing uh, because the standard producer is having an operation. So I'm regularly here and there. A couple of weeks ago, I was presenting and producing that show. So I basically like to think I'm a bit 360. I can do a bit of everything. So this is me. Let's see if I can get this. But I do do some voiceover work as well, lecturing and various other bits of hosting and interviewing and stuff like that. But I did cut a few bits of the radio shows that I've presented and a podcast that I made for the BBC recently uh, into a few bits of audio, just so you can have a little listen to me in, in action. 
Katy Perry changed the rhythm on BBC Radio Manchester. It's the Dead Good Show with me, Shell Zanna. Now, Northern Soul Sunday Social is taking place in Stockport this weekend. John Barrett from Seven Miles Out Records and Foodie Friday is here to tell us more. Hey, John, how's it going? Hi, Shell. How are you doing? All right. I am wicked. I'm thinking of coming down on Sunday. It sounds great. Where... Don't think about it. Definitely do <laughs> come down. So what is it? And where did the idea come from? Can I be excused? Can I be excused? Can I be excused, please? I don't know, superlative. We'll have to think about it. There's so many moments in that song that I thought the desk had broken, but absolutely in love with it. Superlative, can I be excused on BBC Introducing in Manchester? He's been collaborating with so many people of late, including the Mouse Outfit, Mr Scruff, so many names. And now, of course, releasing a new track in his own right. Can I be excused? Go and pre-order on his Bandcamp right now. Now... If you're not aware of it, there is a collaboration, another one happening between a BBC Music Introducing and BBC Sport. It's called The 100. It's like a cricket game, basically played over a hundred balls. That sounds a little bit complicated, I know. It's actually simpler when you're there. But I tell you what, if you love pyrotechnics, get yourself down to Emirates Old Trafford, because every time someone scores a four or a six, fire is literally let loose. And Roche of course, usually of this parish. Uh, he's uh, out and about doing his cricket thing tonight. He's DJing. He's the club DJ for Manchester Originals down at Emirates Old Trafford. And also, we're really lucky that they're getting a few artists down that we've chosen to perform. And we've got some of those in the show for you tonight. Excited to be able to play you this one from the Lathams. They've just announced this week their debut album. It's going to be out on the 24th of September. It's called How, How Beautiful Life Can Be. And this is that track, the title track, that performed live at Emirates Old Trafford. Amazing stuff, isn't it, from the Lathams on BBC Introducing in Manchester. Welcome to Homegrown Heroes, the series that uncovers the origin stories of some of Britain's favourite celebs through the towns that make them. Stockport. It's more of a feeling. Bill's is in the pub at like half two. It's true. I mean, seeing they're really busy, but you see them in the pub at three o'clock. That's why it's not for. <laughs> it's just home, isn't it? Sportsmen have tied themselves into Stockport, playing Frankie Vaughan track to Stockport uh, before they come on at the gigs. I'm going back to Stockport. There's no that to be. You know, they've literally taken the town with them on the journey. There you go. <laughs> Got myself to there. Thank you for the little claps there. I appreciate that. Um, do you know what? That was like so under pressure to get that podcast done. We literally had a month and that was like the hardest thing was to tie up the talent. But, you know, having the skills to be able to piece something together and have a form um, like worked on the format, basically, um, which, you know, is is a, is a great thing because um, I actually got there. Hang on. We'll try and we'll go. Hang on, it's am I? Oh no, we don't want to play it again. We don't want to go again. There we go. So what I was trying to tie that into was how did I get there? <laughs> Basically, I started out with an hour on community radio and a dictaphone that I bought off eBay for 43 quid. That is simply how I started off to get to where I am now. So when you're like put under pressure, extreme pressure, and you're editing a podcast at 11 o'clock at night, that's got to go on air at 9 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> pretty pressured but it just shows if you've got the right skills and you've like honed your skills via whatever platform you've had then you can do it so I got to where I am today via a long lengthy route no one's given me massive opportunities really I started out on community radio Salford City Radio Bolton FM Chawton FM started writing gig reviews for a website started writing single reviews for chimp magazine and fly magazine i was the manchester correspondent then i started writing big long lists of artists that you should be aware of new artists for louder than war and the 405 then i did a bit of band booking artist liaison at festivals a bit of radio plugging um wrote for so many different people I used to host and produce the Wichita recordings podcast which is a record a very cool record label uh did work for loads of other people including NCR live which was another radio platform in Manchester and I've done lots of lecturing and master classes for the likes of BIM Sound City Plus off the record Leeds Conservatoire the Prince's Trust 
like that, presented for brands, been a panelist and festival DJ and hosted loads of stuff, like Jess said, for kind of, you know, BBC Introducing Live. I've been over in Ottawa Music Summit talking to people, DJed at Iceland Airwaves. I do get to get out and about and see live music in loads of different places, which I absolutely love. And then obviously, you know, all about my radio. And I also have done a bit of voiceover stuff and just kind of like got myself set up to be a voiceover by getting a voiceover demo recorded and got myself a voiceover agent so you know anything is kind of possible if you do your homework um current one is trying to do more DJing so now I have invested in the set of decks so after this I might have a proper session on my decks that could be the next thing but um, just wanted you to get to know me a little bit so, so you know that anything is possible with the right kind of you know hard work a bit of graft a bit of resourcefulness and, you know, just building your network and building your knowledge, I think. Um, I mean, I'm very much a music head and very much a radio head. So I thought I would give a little bit of an insight as to how Mark Riley sees it as working, because I always think that Mark Riley has so many live sessions that it's really, you know, a valuable platform for artists. So Mark Riley said that radio is so important because um, in the 15 years he spent at this time on Six Music, he was lucky enough to book and witness like 2,000 live bands playing live for him. And he said 90% of those were actually play, playing live in the room with him. And he tries to find new bands. He asks bands he loves who they love, which is something I do. And it's a really good trick. And so it continues that you end up in the middle of a network of thousands of musicians who are usually all as mad about music because they shout about the people that they're dead passionate about, people that they know from their local scene or, or further afield. And he said, that's when the magic comes in. All different broadcasters have their own ideas about what their job is. He says he sees, he sees his as being somebody who simply finds bands and gives them a chance. And I feel the same, like there is no greater feeling than hearing a song being completely blown away having knowing nothing about the artist and it's not about age it's not about genre it's not about anything other than quality songwriting and quality music so I thought that was just a nice little thing to actually remind you that it's not just trying to reach out to like you know the radio producer reach out to your peers as well, reach out to other musicians, work on those networks locally because they can be so powerful for you, especially in giving you opportunities to perform live. So um, oh, we flipped back again, there we go. Um, so who do you wanna get your music in front of? I mean, I was racking my brain, sat there going, right, where do we go? Where do we start? And I was like, right, radio presenters or producers, don't you? I mean, I wrote a massive article earlier on in like lockdown last year for the Musicians Union, just saying all about kind of this, but I'll break it down a bit more as I go through. So I was like, radio presenters and producers. Yeah, you want your music played on radio. Other people hear it. Other people will fall in love with your sound and then go down the rabbit hole, hopefully buy some merch or come to a show and then be invested in what you're doing and following what you're doing. Absolutely. Who wouldn't want that? Bloggers and print press. I mean, a lot of people have said, is blog is a blogger's dead? You know, you know, it, do we really care about that kind of thing? But I think, yeah, any kind of online content really does help. And it gives you a link that you can share. If people are Googling about you, they want to see good stuff or find out more about you. So I would still say that blogging is definitely very relevant or online online press is very relevant still. Print press, there is still some, there's still some magazines out there like Dork doing really good stuff and Clash, you know, it's, it's still very relevant, but it is hard to get coverage because there is only so many people writing and there's only so many, like, especially in print press, there's only so many pages, let's be honest. Promoters and festivals. So we're talking about your local promoters and also, I need to talk about a load of emerging music festivals because there are so many that literally have a website and say our submissions are open between these dates and these dates that you could just send your links to. You know, if you're not on that kind of new music festival hype, then ask me and I will give you a list of different festivals that you should definitely be pitching your music to at the right times of the year. Fans, obviously, everyone wants to build their brand and get people come in to watch their live shows. It's that connection that I still feel like in lockdown, we've demonstrated that it's that 
intimate connection of playing live in front of somebody that forges the best connection, I think, to bring somebody into your world invested in your music. Other musicians, I keep going back to, um, I think it's really valuable to build that scene locally and have other artists and other musicians that are supporting you. So if they are playing on a bill and someone drops out and they ask them who they should book, then, you know, they, they say your name and it all comes together. You know, things like that can be really val valuable. And also I need to talk about collaboration. We'll definitely come back to that. Managers. Managers is a funny one because people, I get the vibe that people feel like they've made it if they've got a manager, but they're getting, you know, like, oh, I'm really doing well in the music industry. I've got a manager now and everything. And the reality is a manager can be super helpful and they can make a massive positive difference. And then there's some managers that don't. So my view on that is, yes, it's helpful to get your music in front of as many people as possible, but do not feel like if you don't have a manager, it's not possible for you to progress because I've seen numerous examples in the music industry where that's just not true. You know, you can progress if you, as the sole manager of your own destiny, if you know what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to do and where, where you're trying to go to and how you're trying to get there, really thinking about that. So I would always say, don't, it's not the be all and end all having a manager. I think you will know when you need a manager, when you basically can't cope with stuff yourself anymore. So. I'll park that one for the time being. <laughs> Streaming platforms, obviously these days, get in your tune on a, um, you know, a indie list or a, you know, R&B, you know, whatever the, the hot lists are basically, um, getting your music on those lists can be a real defining moment. Getting your music on TV or getting your music on a game, something like that can be a massive uh, platform for you as well so these are all things to think about and how you get your music to those are definitely worth talking about and considering funding organizations you might want to get some mentoring you might want to get some help to fund recording or some help with getting yourself some live shows and those organizations um, that I'm going to talk about a little bit later on could give you those opportunities if you are struggling to find those on your own PRs Radio pluggers, you might know them better as, or PRs who kind of submit music to journalists for print press and online content. Um, yeah, people that you may need to know in your journey at some point. You may not, if you're early on in your journey, you might not be quite there yet because, you know, it is quite costly and it can make a difference. But it, again, like a manager, it could make no difference whatsoever. So it's one of those, it really depends on where you're at in your journey and where you're aiming at and whether there's any avenues that would be, that they would be likely to help you get there. I think it's really worth thinking about where you're at and what the likelihood um, of, of that help is, because sometimes you're better off if you've got a, a finite amount of money, you might be better off. Um, paying for better production on your track rather than paying for you know plugging something like that obviously labels and publishers um, you want to get your music in front of um, and lawyers too um, sometimes I see with a lot of musicians that the person that they sign up to first is a lawyer sounds quite smart to me I think um, especially uh, making sure that anything that you do sign has been bottomed out and checked by a professional so that you have the right rights over your own material I think it's really really key and it's not something that's commonly talked about but even the bigger independent labels and um, obviously major labels can can well the broken record campaign says everything that I don't need to say really because you can see for people years and years on that they're just making so little out of the the deals that were signed back in the day so if you don't know all about that yet believe me go down the rabbit hole with broken record campaign and uh, it will paint the picture for you very clearly so how do you make a good impression where do you start not everybody is as uh, communicative as I am I get that not everybody is as you know as open and kind of come across as that as confident as I am and you know, you've got to do everything in your own way and in, in your own style. But I would say be open minded about your skill set. Don't do yourself down. I think we're always tend to be as maybe generalizing here as women. We just generally don't have enough confidence in ourselves. I think 
sometimes we feel like it's a bit big headed to crow, but I'm all about crowing because I've not seen enough crowing. And I think we should be like basically taking hold and, you know, taking control of the fact that we are knowledgeable and we know our stuff. So, yeah, be open minded about your skill set and learning new skills as well. I constantly feel like it's good to know new skills, like whether you're just taking a video on your phone and trying to make it into some content or some photos or something like that. Um, just doing something completely unrelated to music, but you think will make you relatable to your audience or your fan base. You know, I think anything like that that you can do that just takes you out of your, you know, out of your little confined space and makes you feel more confident about what you are able to do. For instance, I was like, right, I need, I'm, I can video edit, but I really want to learn some mad video editing skills. So I just spent loads of time in lockdown on YouTube watching video editing tutorials. So there's loads of good stuff out there. There's loads of great people out there as well that can, you know, that are sharing ideas and sharing knowledge. So, yeah, just, you know, sometimes empower yourself and set yourself a little bit of time to learn something new that might help you on your journey. I think it's a really good thing to invest in yourself. And I don't think we do it enough. So, yeah, be open minded about your skill set. Don't box yourself into a corner and um, definitely network. <laughs> you're doing a great thing being here pat yourself on the back in the first place but be responsive if someone's going to contact you don't sit on the email or the text for three days because it might actually be for something that's today um I feel like I've got a lot of opportunities because I've been good at communicating um it's easy to say be available because you're not always if it's last minute but um I think people that are more available get more opportunities and you know, the basic courtesies, I think, of being helpful and polite, making a good impression, being reliable and punctual. You know, as a portfolio worker, I don't think I'd have been working for as many different organizations as I am if I hadn't have had all of those things in check. And the thing is, reputation is everything. Like a few years in the music industry, I realized that it's such a small world. Everybody knows everybody. And if you've like upset somebody, that's it you know what I mean you know that somebody's going to tell somebody else so be very aware of that and that's why I think these basic impressions about being reliable being punctual I mean I've had people say that they would get me content they would get me a little video that I'd asked for for BBC introducing and then like three weeks later I've still not had anything and I've chased them twice and still not received anything and then like two months later, they'll come to me and say, do you still want this? And the chances are I'll probably say, yes, of course. Here's my email address. Just send it over. Da, 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 da. You've got the details. And then I still don't hear anything. And it's like, am I going to prioritize putting that person on the show if they just can't be bothered? And I appreciate that, you know, something serious may have happened. There might be some massive reason that they couldn't. And if that's the case, then I'd, you know, happily let somebody, you know, explain it to me and no problem whatsoever but yeah you've got if, if you if you're going to be not reliable then you know if I've signed somebody up to do a live session and then they don't reply and then I'm left with no live session on a radio show it's going to look pretty crap so I think those kind of core values are really really key I think to me anyway I think reputation is definitely everything so where do you start um I think the internet is a very powerful resource and each radio station, each blog, each, you know, magazine, every, everything has a different approach. And I think the key thing you need to do is do a bit of homework and tailor your approach and approach those that you know will be interested in what you're doing. So if you were going to go and play a live show, you would want to go and play a live show supporting somebody who has maybe a similar ilk to what you're doing or has some synergy with what you're doing. Like, so I would be approaching a promoter, for instance, that was, you know, like, oh, you had such a band on the other day or you had such an artist on. I think you'd, re if you like them, I think you'll really dig what I'm doing, even if it's not for a gig that's coming up in the next few weeks, but maybe for the next few months type thing. That's how to almost give them some, some synergy I think to maybe draw them in to listen to your tune I think it's so important to kind of tailor your approach and do a bit of homework so there's no point pitching a neo soul track to a rock show for instance you know what I mean it's just a little bit of common sense really but like you don't know until you asked how people want to receive their music like 
I'll come to radio a bit more, but some of the radio stations have uploaders and some of them don't. They just have, they might have some details on the website for a specific show. Um, but it's amazing. The amount of people that basically send me links for amazing radio and I'm like, it's just an uploader. If you listen to my show, I actually say it in the show, which tells me you've not listened to the show. So you won't know how to upload your music. So yeah, do a bit of homework um, and I'll come to... DMs and stuff like that, because it is a little bit overwhelming at times. I think I've, I've said this before, polite, patient and positive. Yeah, definitely push out the positive vibes because everyone wants to buy into something that's positive, don't they? You know, um, especially when you're like, look, I've got I've got motion at the moment. This is happening and I've supported them. And that's what you want to know, isn't it? You want a few of those lovely things that you've been working on kind of linked together to give you a little bit of a bit of a sell a, a positive sell so yeah be positive be polite be patient because music doesn't move quickly I think we all know that it can take time um to really progress but yeah be reliable be consistent and be true to your word if you say you're going to do something do it or if you can't do it just be honest and tell somebody pretty quickly if you can't do something because they'd much really they'd much rather hear that and arrange so have the time to arrange something else than find out on the day that you know you can't perform a show or you can't do a session or something like that so I always have, and even myself, I have to have these, the basics prepped and at hand for fast turnaround. So one really good quality photo. And I would say always be central in the frame because you know what, a lot of the uh, assets that are being made for radio platforms at the moment are square, even though like Instagram stories are kind of long and tall and um, that's rectangular, isn't it? Um, yeah, they, <laughs> a lot of them are still square because they tend to put them out on the as posts or on Twitter. And if you have tall ones on Twitter, you can't really see them. So um, definitely a lot of the branding and a lot of the um, kind of set templates that they have at most radio stations are square. So I'd say if you make sure you're central in the frame, it can be super colorful, as colorful and bright as you want. I would avoid a white background generally because the branding could have white on it for whatever reason. So that makes it hard to make a photo work, for instance. The BBC introducing ones have white on. So if you have a white background, you won't see Manchester on it, for instance, or you won't see West Yorkshire on it, for instance. So. I'd always say, yeah, have a good quality photo or a range of them. Uh, have Be central in the frame, colourful, avoid white backgrounds. Even if you have them somewhere like a Dropbox or something like that, where you can just send the link out, you know they're all there, you know they're in a set place and you've got the link saved on your phone somewhere. So somebody emails you and can just copy and paste it. Also have a biog. Now, if you just started out, I know it's a bit overwhelming thinking, what do I write about myself? We've all seen these things like, you know, four, uh, you know, a four piece band from Scarborough. And it's like, well, it's not really a unique selling point, is it? Like, it's a fact. So I have a friend called Lisa and she has um, a account called Just The Type UK on Instagram. And she writes biogs for artists. She used to write for magazines now, but she does biogs for artists and she's really good. She's definitely put some good tips out. So I've borrowed some of these tips from Lisa and um, she's like tips. Facts are not unique selling points. Figure out your elevator pitch. Use a magazine. Say you've picked up a music magazine and it's got someone interviewed and they've got a load of Q&A questions. Get your mate to sit down and interview you with those questions for instance for instance, get you to like role play it out and see what the interesting answers are that you get back and try and run with some of the more interesting answers, some of your, something that makes you different, something that makes your music stand out. Maybe, maybe it's how your music makes someone feel. I don't know, just anything out of the ordinary that's not like, you know, I'm, I'm a musician from Harrogate that does folk music because it's not really giving anybody much to go on, if you know what I mean. If there's an in interesting instrument that you play, if you got into music in an interesting way, all of that stuff is far more colourful and kind of brings things to life. Um, but anyway, on Lisa's website, she's got she does post a number of her 
um, biogs so you can get a flavour for what she's written about other people, which actually I think can be quite useful if you see things like that. She does do a few, um, she does do a few like masterclasses at events that she's done previously, at, like off the record. So that was kind of like, I think, free as part of the event. So look out for those. If you're really struggling, um, you know, look on your network and see if there's pe anybody that's really good at writing who you might be able to do something for in return, give them some guest list or a show if they write you a biog or something like that. There's always opportunities to network with like different people with different talents that I, that, that's how I would put it. Um, and music, obviously. You need to send your music in a format that is required by the place you're sending it to. It could be an upload um, link or um, I would say if you're going to send a downloadable link, send one that doesn't expire. So we transfer is a no, no, because seven days and it's gone um, because it might take somebody longer than that to get through their emails. Or I find sometimes with Google Docs, it can need another level of approval, even though you've sent it without it needing approval. Uh, it might need approval again to download it. So I would just say, whatever you're doing, make sure it is sure thing. The song is there to stream and if they like it, they can just one click download, whether that's SoundCloud or Dropbox, something like that. And also just because I'm a safety girl, make the file tie, the file name, your artist name and song title, um, because the amount of times things just disappear into the ether and you're like, where did that go? What was it called? Where was it? I can't find it again. You know, just make it absolutely idiot proof for people because yeah, it's, it's just better safe than sorry, isn't it? You want to make sure that your music is heard at the end of the day. And if it is heard and it's light, that it is played. And I would do anything that I can to ensure that that happens. So, yeah, make sure it is uh, artist name and song title just to be absolute sure. So this is it. Getting set for success. I've come up with some very imaginative titles here that hopefully are a little bit empowering. <laughs> that was my thought anyway. Um, one thing that I never thought about until I started being a presenter and therefore a brand, because if you are a musician, you are automatically a brand. Make all your photos and your social media account names consistent if you can. Because if someone's looking for you on their platform of choice, then they want to know it's you. And it's so hard searching through to try and tag people on different platforms if you're like someone like me I like to tag every artist and type like have a playlist that I share uh, on my socials so yeah if you can make them all the same account you know even if it's something slightly random like Burr who is B-E-R um, is called hey there it's Burr on Instagram hey there it's Burr on Twitter as long as you know that then you can find her on every platform and yeah, like whatever your image is, or if it's a photo or whether it's some branding is your image, just try and make it consistent across all social platforms. But you don't have to be on, I'm not saying you have to be on every social platform, um, but we'll come to that when I talk a bit about social media. Always have clear and direct contact details, like put the person that you know, if you're in a band, put the person that you know is the most responsive like on email or phone <laughs> and put their details down. And hopefully if they're the most organized person, that really helps as well. Uh, I would say clear and direct contact details, even if it's just an email address, you know what I mean? On your information on Twitter or Instagram, because, you know, sometimes there's a cancellation or a gig comes up, it's got a fee and they need somebody and they're just looking for somebody and they're looking at you thinking, yeah, can we get this locked down within an hour? Uh, you know, it can make all the difference. So um, I've said already, tell your, tell your messages to the personal organisation. If I get an email from somebody saying, Shell, I absolutely love that beige banquet tune that you played the other day. Absolutely obsessed with it. If you like that, I think you're going to like this, what I'm doing. Here it is. I've uploaded it to amazingradio.com. Here's the link. And I'm like, winner. <laughs> I'm not going to not listen to that, am I? It's just making it super personal. It shows they're invested in what I do, that they've got an ear for what I do, and that they've probably got an ear for my music taste. Um, and then job, jobs are good, and the music's already where I need it to be to be able to play it on radio. So, you know, I would just say, whatever you're doing, whoever you contact him, just have a look at it. And if in doubt, DM them. Well, actually, don't DM them. Openly message them. Like if it's on Twitter or Instagram, 
I would openly message them wherever you can and stay out of the DMs um, and just say, how do you prefer to receive your music? Is there a specific email address? Is there a specific way? And no one's going to be offended by that. The issue with DMs is if you get tagged, like Instagram, for instance, you get tagged in loads of different posts because you've done a radio show. That message that somebody might have sent you drops down to like 30 or 40 down. You can easily lose it. So it's always best if you can to try and either openly message somebody uh, on a platform that you know they're quite active or try and email them. Um, although emails are another ongoing nightmare for most journalists at the moment, I think. But yeah, the, the next bit about really this is social media. Know your audience. Who is your audience? Who is your your fan, your number one fan? Have you got a vision of them in your mind? Do you know the type of person they are, whether they invest in merch, whether they, how many gigs they go to? Uh, because that will really dictate to you, I think, um, which social media platforms they'll be on. Um, I would roughly say that at the minute it is me mum on Facebook. <laughs> so, you know, Facebook, having a Facebook page is so helpful for having your contact details on there, because in the first instance, like people are going there to maybe find your email address, find out if you've got any shows. I think that's really helpful. But anything else that you're sharing on there is probably lost in the abyss. Let's be honest, because it is just your mum and your dad and, you know, various family members reminiscing over, you know, holiday photos or something like that. Twitter, I would say, is probably people from 50 down to about 20. Instagram definitely seems to be where a lot of the musicians are at the moment. Like we get more interaction from Instagram than anything else. Um, and then obvious. So I would say Instagram's probably people in their 40s, 30s, 20s, teens. And then TikTok. TikTok is not to be slept on because I've seen artists of late getting signed by major labels because of what they've been doing on TikTok. And there are people just set up in studios just to make music for TikTok, which is just absolutely mind blowing. But yeah, very much like teens and 20s on TikTok. So really, it does need a bit of thought to work out who your audience is, because there's no point you wasting your time on TikTok if your audience is on Twitter you know, or, you know, it, it tailly and, and the content that gets devoured on all these platforms, social media platforms are so different anyway. You want to be make sure, making sure that anything that you're investing time in and creating is, is relevant for the platform you're trying to, you know, engage your fans on. Um, I will come to more platforms very soon. Um, I did say a minute ago, don't expect a reply by DM because, you know, ask openly for preferred contact details because, yeah, the, the DMs just disappear. Even if you're the politest person, it's it's quite difficult to, to keep on, to, on top of them. Um, build your network, including local artists, to build a rapport with other musicians. I think it's so important for, like, not just for, like, opportunities, but also for your mental health as well. Like, you know, skill sharing, support, all those different things is just so important. And having a friendly face that might come down and watch a gig, even though they're not playing that night, you know, it's it's just nice to have like-minded people that totally understand where you're coming from, that you can pick the brains of over an amp or a problem with, you know, your you pedal or something like that, or, you know, your looping equipment, whatever you, you know, struggling with. It's just, it's just really valuable, I think, for that, for that reason. So I think in terms of being on social media um, with your music, Digital content really does count these days, like having videos, animation, something that moves is preferable to everybody at the minute because it's eye catching and it takes up a bit of the screen, a bit more of the screen. So it actually, you know, you talking about a gig becomes a bit more um, obvious when it's taking up a bit more of the screen, it's taking a bit more attention. And then obviously, if you can't do videos or animations, photos are obviously really good and, you know, obviously great on Instagram as well as other platforms they are just more eye capturing and you know posters of gigs and gig touring tour dates coming up or little teasers that give us an idea of what's coming um I like that kind of approach where there's little bits like seeping out that getting you more and more intrigued into what's coming 
plan plan and plan some more i know artists in west yorkshire that have got like a plan for the next year like we're going to release a single every three months and we've got this video to go with this one we're doing a mini album and it blows my mind but it's true to try and it's almost like to build that rapport to keep building that profile you have to have that reliable consistent approach so you know, you might think you, you're doing a little video out in the um, outdoors, I don't know, on, on some lovely scenic landscape and, you know, you're just doing the video. But no, take a load of photos when you're there, even stuff that looks a bit random and eclectic, because it might just be that you can tease a photo or you can tease a colour or something that then just builds you up to like dropping a a tune slash video eventually. I think the mo the, that's what I see with people that are being super successful with each project is they've got it planned out months in advance, the people that they're working with, how to use that imagery in those videos or those photos to just kind of eke it out and have the biggest impact. I think it can make a real difference. And it doesn't always have to be really costly either. If you've got a good eye for photos and, and for vision, then I'm not so not so great with that myself, but uh, I know that some people are really good at that. Even if it's just something a little bit random and oblique, it can just make a massive little tease on the way uh, for a project. So insider knowledge. I promise you we're coming to some questions soon. This has been quite a heavy chunk. But ultimately, you know, if you're working at BBC Introducing like I am, we don't often get a photo. We don't often get any information over anybody's age. Why would we want it? Uh, we might get a bit of knowledge about where they're located, but that can be really vague as well. So it all comes down to the music. The music is absolutely key. Consistently strong tunes high quality songwriting, well produced music. And that doesn't mean having to be produced by a high level producer or mixer. It could be done by yourself. We play like bedroom pop and all sorts on uh, introducing West Yorkshire and introducing Manchester. But, you know, ultimately it needs to be well produced. And how do you find out the quality that you're pitching at? Well, listen to the show. It's always the best thing to do. Listen to the show and hear what you know if there's anyone releasing music in a similar genre to you have a listen to how their music is sounding on the radio and I guess you can do a bit of homework about how they're getting to where they are who they're who's booking them as a promoter who's you know supporting them with releases I think it's really good to just do a little bit of homework as what's what's working on air and and how you can get your music to that level if you if it's not already at that level but yeah, I think having a strong identity is really important, especially in this world where, you know, is, is it Googleable? You know, there's a band called the Lottery Winners and I don't know how they're doing as well as they are because that is just a nightmare to Google, let's be honest. So yeah, they're doing great because they're really, really great musicians with writing great songs. But yeah, having a good identity, you know, someone that's not going to take you, you're not going to get taken to copyright or whatever over having the same name as somebody else, do all that homework. Is there a strong visual for your branding or for your name? Have you got like a, some kind of brand, like, you know, visual or design um, that you're carrying forward for that? Because, you know, that can, that can instantly transform and make somebody look like cool and edgy. I don't know if you've seen um, Working Men's Club, um, they're a band from uh, Todmorden and they've just, well, the AIM Awards tomorrow, their artwork will be up for one of the categories um, for like design. And I think it's like, so if you've not seen it, go and check it out after. But yeah, I think their branding is really innovative. It looks very 90s rave. It's kind of pulling in some influences of their music, which is like New Order, but a bit more industrial kind of electronica. But it, it, the, the color scheme is like black and neon, which is again, very almost 90s. It kind of all pulls it together. And when you look on their socials, you can see that visual on all of them. And you're like, yeah, it's definitely them. And that's the thing about having like a concept that then carries through. So um, if you have a plan or a narrative that you want to put across, how are you doing that? How are you considering doing that? Because, you know, those kind of things can make your music a lot more interesting to somebody as a music journalist wanting to write about it. So if you have got a really strong ethos or narrative to put across with your music, definitely consider how, how you can do that, whether it's in artwork or whether it's in lyrics or something like that. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> the dogs just growled. <laughs> um, so I, I'm just talking a bit about um, strong and vi professional looking visuals for branding because first impressions really do count. There's only kind of one uh, one way you know, you know when you first drop your music and everyone's like oh you're new and then all of a sudden you're not new anymore um it, it, it's so shallow but that kind of matters so if you're going to do something don't feel like you've got to rush it do it a way that you're really happy with because first impressions really do count and I think you know having that consistent approach that branding something or videos or imaging something that's consistent that really sells you I think you know there's things I've seen of Simeon Walker who's an incredible like pianist and composer from West Yorkshire and um, he has done so many videos that are kind of like outdoors that are just absolutely stunning and I feel like I almost recognize that now when I see that visual uh, it, it you know brings him to mind so if there is anything like that, it's definitely worth thinking about it. Um, I know this is so much more than the music, which is why it is so difficult right now, because it's so easy to get your music out there, but it's actually harder than ever to get your music heard. And that's the problem because it's so easy to get things out there right now. So it's almost like all these things do help, I think, to make people pay attention. So building a platform and fan base, there's loads of different ways, which I'll go through a bit more. Uh, Patreon, mailing lists, Facebook groups. Um, you know, traditionally for radio, there used to be like a three month lead time. So we get CDs that were like, yeah, it's going to be out in three months now. Like premieres aren't really a thing. You can get a tune that you didn't even know was coming like two days ago. And all of a sudden it's in your inbox and it's out. It's absolutely crazy. So it's like all of the work is happening behind the scenes. But for people like uh, me, uh, radio people, uh, music journalists are almost having to jump to attention and like, so things can get thrown out the window very quickly. But um, yeah, it helps if you plan. You know, I have artists saying, right, we've got an EP coming out. It's our first thing that we've dropped in a year. Is there any way we can schedule in a session? And I'll be like, right, yeah, our next time is, you know, mid-September. So because they got in touch with me, say, a month ago, we were able to schedule something around that. But if you say, right, I've got a new tune coming next week you're not really going to be able to do that because your diary might be booked up. So yeah, if you can, if you're at the level where you can contact your local, you know, station and or, or local presenters and tell them what your plans are, I think it can make a massive difference. Get yourself signed up to PPL and PRS because if you're playing live gigs or your music is being played in DJ sets or on radio, you need to get paid for it. So if you're not signed up to PRS and PPL, please make this um, a little mental note to go and do it because yeah, make sure you're earning what's your what, what's due to you. Um, I'd say a month or so notice is required to plan sessions or mixes, often get DJs in to do mixes as well in the radio world at least. So that has been a lot so far. I've got more to go through in more detail, but any burning questions right now because I'm guessing that was a little bit overwhelming. <laughs> that was so interesting. Thank you so much so far, Shell. Honestly, like hardcore. No, it was, I mean, like, I really love the detail that you're going into personally, you know, even the stuff about the images and the files, because it's stuff that you don't really think about. You don't think about. And it's actually such a simple thing to do that will make a massive difference and all of the stuff about planning as well. Um, yeah, it's like a lot of information, but it is, you know, it's really, really useful. So. You know, we, I think as musicians, you want to concentrate on the music. And I totally understand why. But unfortunately, you have to know a lot more than just making music these days um, to get your music heard and in the hands of the right people. So, yeah, I just think you want to make sure you're getting an asset that looks decent to be able to share on your social media platforms um, because a lot of the BBC ones have been taken away from us now. We only have a merged Instagram account which covers like five or six areas so our job has turned from sharing stuff on socials, creating and sharing to um, on our own platforms to creating and sending to artists so they can share on their socials. Um, so we're trying to move with the times and do uh, a few more videos and diff more innovative content. And I think that is definitely coming through. Um, 
the guy that's working on the West Yorkshire account is a guy called Lee, and he, he is he is really good. Um, he's been working on some nice ideas and some nice content. But obviously, you know, getting a piece of getting an image that has BBC branding on it can be absolutely like pivotal to an artist to you know show that you are having an impact you have got the BBC introducing stamp and I try and do something similar for my the featured artists on my amazing radio show as well I create like um playlists and and imagery as well to share um which people then share on their platforms so yeah it can it can make a big difference so if is there any more questions at this point <laughs> I've broken some of that down in a bit more detail um, as I'm going through, but um, in the next few slides. I don't have a question. It is really, really, I mean, it's quite, like you say, overwhelming amount of stuff. I'm scribbling notes. And, <laughs> don't yeah, worry. I feel like, no, no, I feel like I'm kind of, some of these things, yeah, I know, I know, and I need to go on, and especially stuff around like consistent images and, mm. and yeah. Um, and find figuring out where your audience is but it's really helpful so I just wanted to say that at this point and the other no, thing I was no, going to no, say was no. that point, thing about getting someone to write your bio for you um like I have no idea what my genre is this is constantly constantly flooring me but I just as an offer I write um kind of reviews and do interviews for one of our local uh, now then magazine so mm -hmm. if anyone wants any like help with that or um I'm happy for my email to be shared because I don't know what the contact was that you gave Michelle, but I'm sure that, that she's pretty booked up with that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, she's happy to, to offer that for anyone here if they're interested. And that is exactly how and why this is so empowering, because there you go. You've strengthened numbers and there is more skills here than you probably realised. So, yeah, I think it's just a really interesting idea that somebody could like just take a magazine's questions and actually just turn them to answer them themselves and just look for what is interesting and different about your approach because everybody has a totally different story and that's it. It's just, it's in there. It's just waiting to be pulled out, isn't it? You know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I mean, I'm sure they will share the presentation afterwards if you uh, want to listen back, but I can type in um, Lisa's uh, Instagram is just the type. I think it's just the type UK. But yeah, she's, she's put a couple of tips out there in in her instagram on on you know how to write a good biog but i'm sure she, there's more stuff on her website but cool thank you so much um for the kind words uh, hopefully there's a bit more <laughs> like um information comment that will help you too hopefully hopefully it won't bamboo you, bamboozle you too much but yeah i'll crack on then shall i i want to keep you all night <laughs> So how to get your music on radio. This is the one I can tell you the most about. <laughs> so there's uploaders like Amazing Radio. Oh, I know this has changed. I have to admit, I'll have to change that for you. Um, but Amazing Radio is now amazingradio.com, uh, not amazingtunes.com. And obviously BBC Introducing is bbc.co.uk forward slash introducing. And obviously it goes put for your area. So if you upload to West Yorkshire, it'll come through to me. Um, if you upload in Manchester, it'll come through to me. Um, if you upload to North Yorkshire, it'll go to Jericho. And, um, you know, there's Alan Rohr in Humberside uh, and Christian Carlisle in Sheffield. So there's teams at every single BBC introducing um, local station and they just get the music that comes to their area. But lots of other stations play new music, like, for instance, Excess Manchester do. Um, so it's always best to check your website of the radio station or if there's a specific DJ that you're, you know, a fan of. John Kennedy on Radio X is always a really good one. Elizabeth Alka does Unclassified on Radio 3. She plays some really incredible music. You know, there's so many different, like, platforms. I mean, one of the artists we had at Manchester that was doing jazz... We also get to forward artists over. So even if we don't play you on the show, we might forward you over to another inbox, for instance. So for the uploaders, you might get a chance to be played by on national radio. So we forwarded a track that we loved over to um, Giles Peterson on Six Music and he played it. He got that much love in the comments from people listening that he then went on to sign that act. 
so uh, to his label Brownswood. So, you know, these things can happen. It is not unheard of, even, you know, if you're not like Radio One Pop, you know what I mean? You're like avant-garde jazz. There's still opportunities. There are loads of different um, radio shows that we can forward music over to, which is a great thing. And also live opportunities too. We've got people playing Reading and Leeds um, this week, this coming weekend who put their music forward and were forwarded over from the local teams. So basically I'm saying do a bit of homework and it can go a long way. If you've got any, like, don't forget community radio stations as well. You know, there's lots of student radio stations and community radio stations. They're always so great at literally getting on it and playing new music really, really quickly. So don't feel like you need to start there because you might work your way up from there and there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I started out working in community radio, so that just says it all really, doesn't it? So ask DJs how they prefer to receive their music. Don't overlook the community radio stations. I'm re I'm saying things and then I'm coming to them. It's quite funny. Uh, tailor your tracks for radio. Yes, think about duration. If you're submitting a seven minute track, is it likely to get played? It might do, but it might get faded out at the end as the last track. Um, three minutes, something like that is really catchy. Uh, and I know it's not always possible with certain genres of music. You know, a beautiful folk trap, uh, track will feel like it's been ripped off if you're trying to cut it too early, um, especially a piece of classical piano music or something like that. You know, we have had beautiful pieces of music that are piano music that are just two minutes long, though. You know, so really think about where you're aiming, where you think your niche is for your music to be. If it's a particular station, right, what kind of length should it be? Also, swear edits essential, because if you're putting a show together with 30 tracks, um, uh, you just don't have time to, to swear check them all. And if there is a foreign language in them as well, if it's not a native language, like for, a, for instance, I really speak English and really, really bad, bad, bad Spanish and French. But um, we'd have to go and send, you know, we have to send it somewhere for a swear check uh, or a, a lyric search. And, you know, it's, it's so hard to get that done in the BBC, for instance. So, you know, think about the use of, you know, language swears are just not worth it in fact dj paulette kicked off about swears the other day she was like just doesn't add anything and it doesn't give you any more opportunities and i was like yeah it actually takes opportunities away um even if you're a rap or grime artist we still need to swear edit it i can't put it out on radio um there's certain things like you know we, we were in the studio the other day and there was a track and it said pussy and we were both like can we play this do we have to edit that out but it's not got any malicious content to it but it you know what I mean it's just not worth the putting people in that position if you want to get it to radio make it as tailored for radio as you can uh, radio pluggers we've talked about before they can cost a lot of money they can make a massive difference they can make absolutely no difference I think in my experience if you've got a bit more gravitas in that you've worked and build a pro built a profile a bit yourself they're more likely to get success taking your music to a national radio station if you've already got that little bit of progress behind you uh, and a few spot plays already I think if you're expecting playlisting when you've had a ne never had a spot play before I think you know you might be being ripped off um Tom Robinson from Fresh on the Net Six Music has a lot of stuff on his website and he writes a lot about unscrupulous pluggers as well so if you're in any doubt you're being approached by people that are just saying they can plug your music and get, get it on national radio. Definitely read up on that just to make sure you're not being manipulated or you're not being ripped off because that's the, the worst thing that could happen to anybody. I know a lot of people that see that they've had a spot play on Six Music and they'll all of a sudden get contacted by a group of pluggers apparently. So yeah, just, just be wary of that. It's just something to be wary of. And I've already said it, sign up for PRS and PPL because... It's just the best. Basically, you need to, but you need to be um, getting your getting your due. Um, so I'm pretty experienced in radio, as I've said. Um, I interview a lot of people. Like I said, started out with a dictaphone that cost me forty three quid. They let me loose on the drummer of the Temper Trap. That when Sweet Disposition was riding high, I learned a lot of skills from Toby. Thankfully, but um, the things I would say to you as an artist. 
pick your best talkers. Not everybody has to be there. Just pick your best talkers. If that's the drummer and the guitarist, or it's just you on your own, absolutely fine. Because you would rather have a really good talker and someone you can bounce off and have a bit of interesting, you know, kind of direction with than three people all boisterous trying to talk over each other it, you know when you get to the professional levels you might get one person or two if you're really lucky you very rarely get the whole band or you know the whole ensemble it just doesn't happen so pick your best talkers focus on what you're good at as individuals if someone's dead good at organization yes let them sort that out and if there's someone that's good at talking yes you can sort that out if you're good with itinerary um tour managing driving whatever you know just literally i would look at your skills and work to your skills for sure you don't all have to be involved and it doesn't look bad on the other people that are not there if they're not um, also check what you can and can't reveal before the interview because it is always harder to go back afterwards and say actually we can't say that it's not being announced yet can you cut that out I always will cut something out like that because I know I'm doing the edit but not everybody would do that and I think you just need to make sure that you're not getting yourself in trouble with anybody <laughs> if it's a label or if it's a publisher or anything like that so find out if it's live or pre-recorded and if it's pre-recorded, when is it going to go out? Because obviously you want to shout about it. You want to be uh, asking. It's OK to ask if there's any assets available. I've had people do that to me and I've sent them a little asset for them to, to put out as well. You know, often if it's an interview, they might there's more likely an asset. So, you know, don't be don't be frightened of asking stuff like that. It looks really pro proactive and professional, I think. And it means that you're you know, you are thinking about using these opportunities to build your profile and it looks good on your socials for instance have your gig dates written down <laughs> in front of you the amount of artists that are like yeah I know we're going here and there but hang on a minute I'm just gonna have to you know <laughs> and it's funny you're just trying to find the gig date so if you have got something to promote the first question that I always ask before I start my interview is is there anything we need to promote that I need to draw out of you and it's just the best thing they say, actually, yeah, we've got a mini album coming out. We've got tour dates. We're going to be doing that. And you, you're like, right, OK, I can tailor my questions to try and draw those out for you then. So if there's anything that you really need, you want to talk about or you're trying to sell, even on email, if they're sorting out an interview with you, throw it in. Yeah, we can talk about this, this and this, because if that person's got that information in their head, they will draw it out of you in the interview and it'll be a much better interview. So, yeah, take all your information and set yourself up well with that take notes for things you must remember to say or plug because if you're anything like me it's in and out very quickly but yeah I mean that's the makings of a good interview I think social media it's like a blessing and a curse isn't it <laughs> so I've just talked about interviews yeah if you've got any interviews or sessions things like that that are happening always make sure you're plugging them on your socials. I think that's a bit, I mean, I'm just te teaching you to suck eggs a bit now, I think, but um, take your social media content. And if you want to film, like we've had people in for sessions who have said, can I film? And I'm like, yeah, you, you can film, no problem, but just stay out of the way if there's a filming crew that are filming content for the BBC introducing web pages or certain, you know, uh, certain radio station or, you know, uh, lots of people filming for YouTube and all sorts these days. So yeah, you know, feel free to ask if it's okay, but I wouldn't get in the way if there's a professional looking kit there because you wanna make sure that that gets placed on their platform. For instance, if you've got a video that you've filmed yourself, which you can share on your socials, is it gonna look as good as a uh, BBC introducing session video that's filmed with all the branding attached to it and is on a BBC website? Well, I think that kind of means more, doesn't it? And you can screen grab it and link to it and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, um, I, I just seen certain people come in and be very unprofessional about that. So I think just be aware of that. And, you know, it's nice to ask and just be aware of those things. Have the correct contact details on your social media. You never know when an opportunity is going to arise last minute. I was uh, Googling 
working men's club earlier on and I was like yep you go to their Twitter account and their manager's number is at the top you go to their Facebook page and it's their band email and I'm like I can tell that their Twitter has been updated and they're more active on Twitter because that's where their audience is more so than their Facebook I'm guessing their band email will probably still get through to them but that that would probably be forwarded over to the manager and you end up with free emails and you've got no further so yeah it's just have consistent details on your social media and have the fastest most direct way to contact you um you never know what could happen and you want to be there um and be able to respond when it does um whatever plan you have in place take vague i think i've said this already vague and strong visual shots think about you know how you kind of um i can't see my slide there we go um think about drip that meant feeding, uh, feeding the news out, like teasing a drop. So sometimes, you know, you see these examples where a, um, like an artist will delete all their social media presence. All of a sudden it's a blank screen and then something, you know, bright and uh, light with LED pink lights comes, comes up or something like that. And there's just little bits and teasers. That's the kind of smart way to do it. If you've got that profile and you're able to do you know, something like that, it can make a massive difference to, to getting people interested in what you're doing and getting your fan base engaged and almost asking them what they want as well, if there's anything they want to know. So I think the visual side of it can be really kind of, it can really build profile. Um, but it really depends on your journey and where you're at, I guess, and and the level of resource you've got, because it's, it's quite a big ask, I think, if you've not got too many skills in the department of um, of, of video and, and uh, photo editing. I would say I am not brilliant, but I can get by and I get by by using uh, iMovie on Mac, which is really easy to video edit on if you've not done it. And you can drag music really easily into it. And I don't have the full blown Photoshop. I have Photoshop Elements, which I think I bought for like 70 quid. But actually, it does everything that I need it to do, including creating templates that I can drag. Um, so there are a few bits of software that I constantly go onto YouTube and, you know, Google how to do things if I'm not sure of. Um, and they, they work really well for creating branding. There's, there's other stuff that's even like there's loads of free stuff out there. Be Funky allows you to do, um, which is a website, by the way, Be Funky allows you to do loads of um, like when you put loads of photos together in a montage. And there's another one called Canva. You've probably seen online on adverts and stuff. Canva's quite good if you want to overlay a brand branding over a photo of yourself. Say you're going to get played on a radio station. They've not provided you with an asset or you're going to be featured, interviewed by somebody. If they've got a logo that they can send to you and you've got an image of you or your release or something like that, you can try and merge the two. I think Canva, for the most part, is free. I think you, know, you have to pay if you want the higher level to blank out the background, something like that that but definitely worth looking up be funky in canva if you need anything like that to do anything like that um and you don't have loads of mad skills or access to loads of mad software um i said some of this before about um networking with people in your area uh, supporting each other filming photographs recommending support slots for shows connecting on socials it's always good to see that interaction on socials as well because it just allows other people into the conversation as well and I think sometimes we like use socials but do we really think about using them like on Instagram you've got highlights what can you use your highlights for you could put your highlight have a series of insta stories about a relief and just have it as a highlight so, you know, you can point people in the direction of all the details are on that highlight. Or uh, have you ever heard of a website called Linktree? Um, not everybody knows about Linktree, but some people do. Good to see a few nods of heads um, because uh, Linktree is super helpful. Often you go on social media platform and they give you one website. So if you have a website, it's quite great that you can link people to it. But say you want to have more um, opportunities to link things. So like your merch, live shows, like buying tickets, or you might have a release or an article or an interview. For me, it's like shows I've presented if you wanna get your music to me. It just gives you a load of different ways to list links 
and it just gives you obviously a link tree as just one website so you post that on your biog and it will take you to all the links that you've added onto it basically so if you've not feel if you're feeling like you've not got your social sorted and you want like to have direct more direct links to buy and merch to your patreon if you've got one things like that uh just definitely look into it it could be like web links also pin tweets and facebook facebook posts you can you know pin things to the top um that can really help to steer people towards your latest campaign for instance you know don't forget those opportunities are there if someone discovers you that they will see that thing first and you want that to be what you want them to to see rather than maybe you having a chat with somebody about love island although it is really important to be authentic you know share a bit of yourself don't just be business 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 share a little bit of you and your personality because people want want to know that they really do want to know uh, that you're relatable um and you know what what's interesting you what book you're reading or anything like that it's always good stuff to share on socials i think so streaming, <laughs> the the uh, I, I've got to admit this is not my specialism, but um, obviously there are a number of streaming platforms out there. Um, a lot that you can really like use actually to just support yourself. Like Apple Music for Artists, it's quite easy to use. You can update it with you know your new photos, the same as Spotify again. So you've got consistent branding again. And you can also add a biog onto there to match your socials so you are instantly recognizable as that person. You know, you can check out your insights on streaming as well as like things like Twitter and social media platforms. You can see what your insights are. It can tell you like even Instagram, like how many men, what percentages you've got that are engaging with your profile. So if you haven't had a look at your insights yet, go and have a look, go and have a little nosy and see what you can find out because it might actually you know, give you some in well insights as to how you should be pitching your music and, and, and what you're likely to sell if you were to do a certain merch line, for instance. Um, so where are you being listened to, for, for instance? Is it worth doing a gig over in such a location because you've got a lot of listeners there? How can you target those places? I think it's really useful to use these as almost a you know, a tip, a, 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 like a tool to kind of, you know, uh, focus your journey a little bit. Um, you can add gig details onto them and put merch purchase options as well on things like Spotify. So, you know, actually max out the opportunities to that you can to promote yourself, uh, promote yourself playing live and promote yourself like selling any merch that you might have. Um, it's a really great, I mean, streaming is so difficult. We know, like obviously I've talked about broken record before. It's so difficult, but, you know, it is there as a platform to get, you know, that you can get your fans to share your music and people can discover you um, from just being added to a playlist or being shared by somebody else. Um, the key things are to get people to follow you, because obviously if you they're following you, they're always going to see what you're saying. So the key thing is to ask your fans to follow you and pre-save your releases. The more pre-saving you can get, the more likely you are be able to get on playlist chances, you know, to get on playlists. So add other artists uh, to your own playlists. I interviewed volleyball that Jess said about last week um, and Je and they said they have their own playlist that they set up of artists that they like and I really love artists that do this um, because it's great to champion other artists so yeah they have a rolling playlist that they update which is artists that they love and you know other artists will be sharing news of them being on that playlist and it kind of brings artists together and you know it helps to share and champion others as well as inc increasing your playlist chances because it's a, the algorithm thing isn't it of people clicking on your profile and people interacting with you even if it's on a playlist that you've set up with other artists music on it so definitely worth thinking about you know have a do you know what just go online do if you're on a streaming service or you've got access to one go and have a little look see see what you can find see what other artists are doing and how they're setting up their profiles and um i think it's quite interesting when you see the way some people are like supporting themselves um by you know making access to to things like you know merch and, and tour dates via streaming services more questions asked away i think there's a few there's a few nts is another brilliant web-based station yeah absolutely for more specialist experimental genres and of course 
Uh, we have a Worldwide FM DJ in the house, I believe. So yes, there she is. <laughs> so yeah, there's so many different platforms and sometimes it's just about searching out the ones that actually are relevant to you and focusing your energies on there. You know, there's a lot of people... You know, not ever, not radio one. Radio one doesn't fit everybody. I, you know, and I would say amazing radio. We do play a wide range of genres, but it's not for everybody. So it's almost like worth doing that homework to see where you should be reaching out to for sure. And NTS is great. You know, so many different DJs on that. I need a bigger band. As Anna, are you doing it all yourself? Is that the problem? <laughs> yes, you are. Much. Well, I salute you because it is hard. It, it, there's a lot to do, isn't there? It's it's very difficult, I can imagine. And speaking as a journalist, Abby, if it's for print, don't ask if you can see it before it's published. <gasps> really? I need to know that story. It's, it's not a good vibe. Just something that I noticed a few bands that they haven't been interviewed before, they don't quite realise how it works. Like they, they think it's like PR and it's kind of different. And they sort of assume you're going to send them the piece for, and you know, just like just don't ask. Basically, it's it's important for you to give the journalist the right information to start off with, and just yeah. tying with what you were saying about, um, you know, don't give tell them things that you don't have to reel back on. Yeah, and make make the journalist's job easy. But but yeah, don't ask to see the piece because like obviously, and the, the piece that the journalist submits might not even be what gets printed anyway because it might get edited. So just yeah, make make the job easy and, and remember it's not it's not the same as putting an advert in something. You're not entirely in control of it. And also, you know, yeah. music journalism is subjective. Ne not everybody's view is the same. So if you get spurned or burnt by one, de you know, one music journalist, just, you know, move on, let it go. And, you know, remember that not everybody has the same ears and they may have been having a bad day. It's definitely down to them and not to you because I personally, as a music journalist, if I didn't like the music, I wouldn't write about it. I wouldn't talk about it. I wouldn't play it. I don't think it is fair to be negative about somebody's creativity because we all have different ears but yes yeah, some people there's a certain people like pitchfork i know have been very controversial over the years um because they feel like they can just say whatever they want and they almost do it to court attention and you know i don't think it's very cool to be honest but yeah just um Try and rise above it. Has anybody else at this stage got, I've got a few more slides, funnily enough. Has anybody else got any any questions? Any more questions? Yeah, quick question about what you, you mentioned about foreign language music on uploaders. And yeah. Would you, would you say, so I, I mostly write in English and occasionally in Dutch because I grew up there. Um, uh, would you say just avoid, just don't, don't bother uploading that or? I think it's difficult. Shot? but. I think it's difficult because often we would ask for a, a translation, but then somebody could lie to us. So really, we kind of need to send it to somebody to get it translated um, with, you know, if you think, say, for instance, with BBC Introduce in West Yorkshire, we'll probably get 100 uploads a week. We're trying to get out 30 new tracks a week as much as we can do. Um, it just means that I don't think I've ever had an email back about a translation. I've just been told to like ask the artist for a translation. And then I had one back from Calva Louise, who were actually playing the introducing stage at Reading and Leeds this weekend. And they gave me a translation and it was full of swears. So I just didn't play it. I think, yeah, I, I mean, it's not unsurmountable, but I would say if you're sending your music to a busy station that has a lot of tracks, it's going to be less likely to get played if it was a smaller station for instance that's got a bit more time and resource that you know to be able to do those checks then it might be more successful so. all right so that's just it's useful to know because i did I, i've uploaded recently a, not recently a song to it is to bbc west yorkshire and um it's just good to know why why it didn't get didn't get follow-up after um i was having like quite a good run so that's encouraging to hear. No, <laughs> no problem. Yeah, it's it's always difficult. Obviously, now when you upload to introducing, 
you can put track notes on each track. That's um, an uploader update that happened like a couple of months ago, and that is super helpful. So if you've got any details or anything about this, this the particular song, you can now put that on on there. But obviously, if it's like a translation, it's probably going to be quite, quite lengthy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is. It just makes it a bit more complicated. We have to be so careful with compliance. Um, for you know, making sure we don't air any swears and make sure we don't upset anybody, basically. Um, Thank so you. Difficult. Shall Sorry we, to be so like, annoying. We've got like two more minutes. Um, so we're just going to have to like wrap up, I'm afraid. But I really okay. just wonder if there's anything, any like last words of wisdom that you want to share. I feel like I have so many more questions and like, <laughs> I know you've got loads of loads more stuff you want to share, but um, no yeah, worries. Is, is there any kind of parting words of advice? Um, Just keep or... being yourself because you can't, you know, you are you, you've got your journey and nobody will have the same journey as you Build, you know, be confident in yourself and your abilities um and you know just keep going I think with most musicians you know not everything happens overnight they just keep going and keep the faith and keep evolving until there's a point where it 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 does it does kind of manifest so there are loads of tips here about you know building a fan base things that you can do ideas and they they're not one size fit all you know they're really not but you know think about it look what look at what works for you and I think that's the you know, the best, best thing to do is to actually think about you and think about your fan base and think about what you enjoy doing as well, because not everybody enjoys the same stuff. So, you know, I would honestly just kind of tailor it to, you know, what works for you. So there's plenty of other stuff in here, including supporting funding opportunities. And that's just not just money. That is like mentoring and different places that can support you. Um, and yeah, being organized on the business side of things as well, making sure you're getting your, you know, your expenses, your mileage, your, you know, your fees in, um, don't undersell yourself. Remember that if you are freelance, you're kind of losing a third of everything to tax and national insurance anyway, if you have to register as a, as a business type thing. So yeah, just, just do what works for you and be true to yourself. Right. thank you so much Shell. honestly incredible advice and so detailed and you know obviously you've got so much experience so um it's been so great to be able to listen to you share um would, would we be able to get that powerpoint yes um, i have updated it but i will send it back over with the updated bits yeah. on it yeah because um also satnam says it would be useful to have a list of the festivals um that you mentioned earlier for yeah. to see new music if, if that could I, be added on as well that'd be great yeah i will i don't have an illustrious list but i will put a few together that i think around the north that i think would be super helpful that you, you should definitely submit to brilliant um and we can catch you on amazing radio and your yeah. show every week <laughs> brilliant there's, yeah Thursday night seven till nine and then it's repeated a few times every week as well great and that's just Thank online we can just, we can just find that on if we just type in amazing radio that'll be on amazingradio.com yeah yeah that'll bring and that and you just same place to upload your music if you if you want to get your music to us amazing like brilliant thank you so much Shell. um and thank you very much it's been brilliant thank yeah. you everyone. oh I'm, I'm glad thank you I'm, I'm glad anything I can do to help you know where I am just shout me on socials or something I'm literally Thanks, Michelle Shell Zenner everywhere <laughs> amazing um and just to say um from Yorkshire Sound Women Network the next seminar is going to be the rescheduled seminar that was meant to happen in July um and that's going to be happening now in mid to late September so just keep an eye out on your emails um yeah it's gonna be great so thank you so much everyone I'm looking forward to seeing you next time um and yeah tune in to amazing radio for sure to hear Shell thanks so much thank you <laughs> lovely to see you all bye, bye.